This is Solo Stove, the brand known for its smoke-free backyard fire pits and camping stoves. Started in 2011 by brothers Jeff and Spencer Jan, Solo Stove has grown from a Kickstarter campaign to a $2 billion valuation when it went public in 2021. I remember in that first conversation with them, Spencer and Jeff telling me that they had reinvented fire. And I thought, man, that's a bold, that's a bold statement. I mean, the fire pit marketplace, as I'm sure most people can appreciate, is one that has really not seen any innovation over time. And Solo Stove came in and provided this sort of upgraded technology, upgraded innovation. It's a company similar to Yeti, with its products available in a variety of sizes and prices. Entry-level stove tops and fire pits start around $100, while the largest fire pit, the Yukon, retails for $750. The argument has always been that no one would buy more than one Yeti cooler. But what Yeti has done a nice job is introducing a wide portfolio of products. Solo Stove was a pandemic era winner as people sought more outdoor activities. I love Solo Stove. I obviously love fires and Solo Stove just takes that backyard fire pit experience to the next level. With manufacturing overseas, the company has battled supply chain and freight issues while demand has soared. I think we're through the woods on the supply chain challenges. It was kind of an 18 month-ish type dilemma that brands were facing and we're looking forward to, to 23 and beyond and being able to meet customer demand. Here's how Solo Stove turned backyard fire pits into an outdoor lifestyle brand with over $400 million in annual sales. This is Suddenly Obsessed. So the story all begins in a garage. Spencer and Jeff, two brothers, love the outdoors and were looking to start an e-commerce business. And uh, they were just tinkering around uh, with things, looking on YouTube, and they learned about this thing called secondary combustion. This idea of basically getting warm air to circulate inside of a stove and ultimately combust. In simple terms, the secondary combustion process creates a higher temperature fire with a cleaner burn compared to an open fire. This is the key to its technology. The original Solo stove was an ultralight backpacking stove that could boil water in under eight minutes using just twigs and leaves and, and sticks out on the trail. But customers wanted more. By 2014, the brothers launched two larger sizes. Two years later, a backyard fire pit was released, known as a bonfire. Launched on Kickstarter, the company met its goal of $15,000 in just two hours, eventually raising over $1 million. Solo Stove is probably most well known by its fire pit line. The Bonfire is our most popular, it's the midsize. But what's unique about the Solo Stove product is that it burns nearly smokeless. So rather than sitting around your fire pit playing musical chairs and wondering how the wind knows exactly where you're sitting, you can sit around a Solo Stove for four or five hours and not smell like a campfire. Randy Griffin lives in Dallas, Texas and purchased the Solo Stove Bonfire in March 2019. My dad had barbecue restaurants, so I kind of grew up in smoke. A fire has always just been a calming, really peaceful place for me. And so it was my 40th birthday. My wife wanted to, we wanted to have a big party on my back patio that we had just built. And she was like, are you going to have a fire? And I'm like, babe, it's my 40th birthday party. Of course I'm going to have a fire. So I started Googling smokeless fire pits and all of that. Solo stove came up. And for my 40th birthday, I got my first solo stove. It was a huge hit. To scale the business, John Maris was brought in as CEO in 2018. What I thought was just so cool that Spencer Jeff had done is they had made it accessible for an everyday person in a neighborhood, in a town, to be able to have a, a campfire type experience without having to have a 50 acre ranch. Maris's resume included leadership positions at several Texas-based companies. He saw growth potential far beyond Kickstarter. I'd scaled a lot of businesses from a growth perspective, and I saw opportunities really everywhere. E-commerce still felt really early and untapped. I saw opportunities in wholesale and retail for us to start partnering with brands like Dick's Sporting Goods and Academy and Ace Hardware, some of the partners that we actually have today now. Solo Stove, from its origins, was always a direct-to-consumer brand, so it did rely heavily on word of mouth. Oftentimes, when you're using Solo Stove, you're inviting people over to your home. Then friends and family see this for the first time, you talk about the product, they get to experience it. Then over time, as the company started to make money, they began to lean into performance marketing and target consumers via various uh, social media platforms. Solo Stove generated about $16 million of revenue in 2018. That jumped to $39 million in 2019, Maris's first full year at the helm. And then came the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Silverstone became a, an obvious go-to to try to kind of break up the monotony of your day or all the screen time that we were all experiencing during that time. I think Solo Stove was starting to get some traction before COVID, but the flame really took off uh, with COVID. But you know, unlike many other consumer products, it didn't reach any level of saturation or wasn't already highly penetrated. So much of our business was coming from word of mouth. And when we went into the pandemic and people stopped being able to really spend a lot of time with friends and family because there weren't a lot of gatherings happening, we actually saw our referral rate go down. So the increase in demand was offset somewhat by the reduction in the referral rate. So I'm a realtor here in Dallas and I think the solo stove is a perfect housewarming gift because right now, especially post COVID, people are buying a house not only for what's on the inside, but the outdoor living space. Solo Stove finished 2020 with about $130 million in revenue. The following year, it formed parent company Solo Brands after acquiring outdoor brands Chubby's, Oru Kayak, and Isle. We started getting introduced to other brands that were using outdoor and other means to do the same thing that we were doing. We thought, man, these are brands rather than just collaborating with, we'd love to just partner with. With Solo Stove as its flagship company, Solo Brands went public in October 2021. I bought right at the IPO price, right when it came out, and then it dropped significantly. So <laughs> I think it was like 20 bucks a share. I put a couple thousand bucks in, and now it's, I don't even know what it is, four or five dollars a share. Solo Brands is priced at $17 a share under the ticker symbol DTC. It reached a high of $21 a share shortly after its IPO and currently trades around $4 a share. I'm more sanguine about number five though, Solo Brands, the outdoor products company with a stock that sells at 10 times earnings. I like that. The four companies generated about $404 million in revenue in 2021, with Solo Stove accounting for about 70% of Solo Brands. Through the first three quarters of 2022, Solar Brands has generated about $320 million in revenue. When we look at the first full year as a public company, which would be 2022, the full numbers for the year aren't quite out yet. The company guided the full year revenues to grow 15 to 20%. For a company that saw such exceptional growth from 2020, 2021, to actually grow again in, in 2022, then kind of growing on top of all this COVID demand, in my view, is fairly impressive. Despite this growth, Solo Brands saw two key headwinds in 2022. The pandemic brought on a rapid and unexpected rise in shipping costs. Almost all of the, the Solo Stove products are made in Asia, many in China specifically. And these are big, bulky items. And then they are transported via ocean freight to the U.S and the cost of that just ended up skyrocketing and kept going higher and higher and ended up becoming more of an expense than the company was anticipating. So they had to make some downward revisions to their gross margin as a result. In 2021, Apple introduced privacy updates that allowed users to opt out of tracking activity across apps. It became much more difficult for companies to serve targeted ads on websites and social media platforms. It disrupted direct-to-consumer company landscape overall and how they would go after and try to target customers and, and, and gain new customers. Overall, it's caused an increase in customer acquisition costs for many different types of companies, specifically direct-to-consumer companies that are still building a brand. As Solo Brands enters its second full year as a publicly traded company, it looks beyond fire pits to capture backyards across the U.S. It's introduced a heat lamp, pizza oven, and the Mesa, its entry-level fire pit. Costco is this new emerging partner that just started in the fourth quarter, so that should be a, a nice sales driver in 2023 overall. The Mesa is a product that was launched in the fourth quarter. That could be a gateway product for many consumers to get their first trial with, with Solo Stove. We believe our market opportunity in the U.S. is probably 80 million households, and we're just very early in that story. I still haven't even hit the 2 million customer mark for Solo Stove. So we've got our, our work cut out for us, but uh, lots of opportunity out there, lots of households still to get in front of, and, and lots of just brand awareness opportunities with people that don't know who we are. I do think there is some concern with Wall Street investors that you have a basically a publicly traded fire pit company. It could also just be a one and done. Consumer buys it and then they, they never have to buy another solar stove product again because it's stainless steel and it's gonna last a long time. I think this is what we've been doing for thousands of years. There's life in it, there's serenity in it. There's that place of calming and having real deep, meaningful conversations that a lot of times you're just not gonna get around the kitchen table, but you start a fire in your backyard and life can get really sweet and you can go really deep.